All right, so tonight we're gonna change this trackball. We're gonna fix the switches um, and we're gonna put in some replacement Kyle switches instead of the regular Omron switches that it typically has. All right, so in terms of what we need, um, I have this iFixit kit over here. So let me just plop the screwdrivers. Um, so the trackball itself, I've turned it off. Got to remove the bottom plate. Remove the ball. Just gonna put that over there. All right, um, and now we have a couple of screws that are, I wanna say this particular bit, let's see. Yep, that's the one. All right. Okay, so after removing these six screws, we should now be able to just gently pry open the case, like so. And you'll see that there is one cable over here <clears throat> that attaches top to the PCB. So, Let me just quickly get a plastic tool from the iFixit kit so that I can easily open these up. You just pull them towards yourself, like so. And then just remove the cable and remove the top part. All right, so now that we're inside of the device, you can see that they no longer use the Torx bit, but instead just a regular Phillips bit. So let me just switch that out real quick. I think this might be the one. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so some of the guides say that you should remove the battery first, but we're gonna actually do that at a later point because it's really hard to get to it and to remove the connector here. Instead, we're just gonna remove what we can easily reach one by one. So this bit here is just a PCB that is on wires. So we can just move it out of the way. And then we have access to the screw, one of the two that holds the actual ball enclosure. Okay, and this comes right off. This one has the same mechanism, so just pull it towards yourself and then remove the cable once it's loose. Okay, so now there's one more connector over here that we should remove, again using the iFixit tool because it's convenient, or relatively. Um, the wheel is actually not properly fixed or anything. You can see that it kind of wiggles around here and it's actually it just clips into here. So I think we're gonna pull this out with just a little bit of force to move it out of the way. And then we have much easier access to the rest of this connector, which is now open. Okay, so now we should be able to remove the last couple of screws and remove the entire PCB. So this comes off now, and now it's actually fairly easy to properly remove the battery. 
it's just going to turn on this connector right here, which I think you can like wiggle a little bit and then it comes right out. All right, so this bottom part we don't need right now. We're just gonna focus on the main PCB. Move this out of the way. Um, you can see these are the two Omron switches. And the problem is that they don't click very well anymore. So, you know, they sometimes won't hold your text selection. So what helps is to open them up and to clean them sometimes. But in this case, I'm just going to remove them and replace them entirely just to show you what the procedure is like. And because that's going to be the method that works regardless of whether cleaning works or not. All right, so what I have here is a little thing called the PC byte, and you can use it to fix PCBs while you're working on them. And this is very, very handy for projects like this. All right. So in terms of soldering tools, we have multiple different tools. We have this soldering iron here, and then we have a desoldering tool that has two hot tips. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with this one right here because it's a little easier to reach. And I think we're just going to go for the opposite sides in terms of fixing the board so that we have like a lot of easy reach over here. So the strategy is going to be to just heat up these soldering points right here, all three of them, unfortunately. And um, then the switch should eventually come out, right? But the, the problem is you have three soldering points, so you need to be quick in making sure they all uh, are heated up, you know, uniformly. So one strategy that very often works or at least helps is to just add a lot more solder so that we have like fresh flux. Just gonna do that for all three of them here.
there we go. The old one is out. Now we need to very carefully remove all of the solder because if you can't push the other one in all the way, then you're gonna have a really hard time to like actually solder it afterwards. This one looks really good. This one worked well as well. There's a little trick here. Let's add some solder. All right. Let's inspect what we have changed now. Okay. So let's take one of the Kyle replacement switches and the orientation is really clearly marked on the PCB. You can see that the switch lines up with the switch marking on the PCB. So we can push it through all the way. That's a very good sign. You can actually see how it works in here. Very nice. very weak connection so far but because I only have so many hands I'm just gonna make do with what we have it's good enough to keep it in place while soldering and I'm just gonna push from the bottom to make sure it's aligned One last check that is really 
flat on the PCB because otherwise it's going to be a pain to change later. Alright, yeah, that looks very good. Alright, cool. Okay, there we go. That was switch number one. Alright, I'm trying to kind of bend this out of the way a little bit without bending it too much so we can get it back into its original position later. Okay. There we go. So, let's uh, repeat the same procedure. We're just going to add solder um, to the different soldering points until they hopefully are all nice and hot and can just come out. Alright, that is soldering point number one. Okay, so now let's grab the other tool and let's see. All right, they're all hot. So let me try to push gently. There we go. That's the old one. Now, let's get these soldering points cleaned up like before. There we go. That should do it. Thank you. 
You know, like previously, you can see this is a very, very weak solder. But it's good enough to hold it in place. While we do this other one here. And push from below. As before, let's do a last double check. That does look good to me. Yeah, let's go for it. Okay, that should conclude our soldering. Just doing a quick visual inspection that we don't have any accidental bridges, but I think, I think this looks good. So, all right, so now we need to get this back into its previous shape. This is it position wise, so just gonna add one of the screws back to hold it in place. Okay, then we're gonna take care of this cable here because it's gonna be a pain to reach afterwards. made contact so we're going to press it down while holding it. Good. Okay, that's all the screws. So let's make sure they're all tight, but not too tight. Okay. And then we have the top cover, which we first need to attach the cable. All right, that should fit. Now when closing the case, it's important to be sure that everything is in its proper place because it's easy to have like sort of a millimeter of misalignment somewhere. And then you might only notice it 
when you actually tighten the last screw. So what I like to do is touch it from all the sides and then click all the buttons. That seems good to me. So let's switch back to our last screwdriver bit for this repair and start putting back the screws. All right, there we go. Backplate comes back on. Ball goes back in and there we have it.